This is lecture outline two. We'll start with how to read and write chemical equations or chemical reactions. Our first reaction type is combustion reactions, also called burning reactions or complete oxidation reactions. What I mean by our first reaction type is that this is a reaction that I could ask you to write on an exam. There are only about six types of reactions that I could ask you to write on exams. And of course, there are many other reactions that you'll see uh, but uh, combustion reaction is common enough that, and it has a specific form. And I'll do my first example with the combustion of propane. Propane, CH3, CH2, CH3. We're going to abbreviate that as C3H8. And then when we write this reaction, uh, for any combustion, burning reaction, or complete oxidation reaction, you're going to add oxygen and the products will be carbon dioxide and H2O. And I'm leaving a little space here because I'm going to put in phases. Propane is a gas in this reaction when it occurs. Oxygen is a gas and you'll note that we definitely need the diatomic form of oxygen here. Uh, that's how oxygen appears in chemical reactions the vast majority of the time, great, much greater than 90%. Uh, if you see anything different, that's a, a cause to question things. Carbon dioxide, also a gas. H2O, we have options, but since this it will tend to be a burning process or combustion, there will be a lot of heat, and that heat would generally be enough to cause the H2O to be water vapor, H2O gas. Uh, now, we need to figure out, this is not balanced as written. You can see there are different number of H's, different number of O's, different number of C's. And so I'm going to put uh, lines in front for the coefficients. And now I'll go over my guidelines for balancing a chemical reaction. Many ways to do this. Make sure you find one that works for you. In my guidelines, the first guideline is uh, you, to use lines for coefficients. And for me, that helps me understand when I'm done uh, because I know each of them will have a number on those lines. And then two, put a one coefficient in front of the most complex formula. And I will abbreviate coefficient C-O-E-F-F -F dot. Put a one coefficient in front of the most complex formula. And most complex typically means most numbers, number of atoms, and most number of elements. Either of those either combination. And uh, should you try to balance a reaction and you find that it's uh, difficult, uh, you can start over and try a different choice for your most complex formula. Uh, because in the end, there is only one set of numbers that will work. Uh, I'm going to put that my most complex formula is my propane. That is very much the case for combustion. Then, uh, number three guideline is going to be balance each element in the most complex formula. And three and four sort of go together, uh, but four is going to be save element only formulas for last. And I'll use quotes around this. Elements only formulas so if there was oxygen in this compound uh, oxygen is an element only formula meaning that there's it's an element. There's only one element in it. Here's a uh, molecule or a compound, molecule compounds, same for H2O. Uh, 
the reason you save oxygen for last is whatever happens to the oxygens in the other places, you can always make it balance by adding whatever number you need here. Okay, so uh, what do I mean by balance each element in the most complex formula? Now that I have a one coefficient here, I know that there are one times three carbons on the reactant portion, and now I need three carbons on the product portion of the reaction. Carbon only appears here. My coefficient for carbon dioxide must be a three. Now my carbons are balanced. I'll do the same thing for my hydrogens. One times eight is eight. Hydrogens come two at a time. I need a four coefficient there. Now there's only one coefficient left. That's gonna be my element only formula. I'm going to do that last. And um, now I can count up my oxygens on my product side. Three times two is six, plus four times one is four, so that's a total of 10. Oxygens come two at a time, therefore I need five as my coefficient. And what I always like to do is then revisit this. Five times two is 10. Six plus four is 10. My oxygens are balanced as well. Now um, that covers how to balance the reaction. Now that it's balanced, let's talk about how to read and write chemical equations or reactions. To read this, and I could, con or basically to convert this reaction into an English statement, there are actually two English statements that we can make. First is going to be that one molecule of propane reacts with five molecules of oxygen to produce three molecules of carbon dioxide plus four molecules of H2O. And that's called the molecular or atomic scale interpretation. Then there's the mole interpretation. And we will use the mole interpretation much more in this class. We will also need to know the molecular or atomic interpretation as well. Let's do the mole interpretation. That says one mole of propane reacts with five moles of oxygen to produce three moles of carbon dioxide and four moles of H2O. So when I say translate this chemical reaction or chemical equation into English and do both of the interpretations, now you'll know what I mean. A couple other reactions we'll practice on here. Let's do the combustion of ethane. Ethane is going to be uh, CH3. CH3. We'll condense that into C2H6, and we'll write a combustion reaction. And this is what I mean, but you could be asked to write a combustion reaction given a formula. Combustion C2H6, add oxygen to it, products are carbon dioxide and H2O. You don't always have to put in the phases but since we know them, we will. Put in coefficients in front or lines for them. Start with your most complex formula, almost always the first uh, thing in a combustion reaction. Now I have two carbons. I need two carbon dioxides. I have six hydrogens on the reactant side. Now I have six hydrogens on the product side. Get, uh, gathering up my oxygens, I have four plus three is seven. That means I need seven oxygens on the reactant side. However, oxygens come two at a time. Therefore, my coefficient for oxygen is seven halves. And this is not finished because a balanced chemical reaction as small whole numbers. And uh, significantly, when you do the molecular interpretation, there is no such thing as seven halves of an oxygen molecule. 
And so just to be clear, when we balance reactions, we will always use small whole numbers. Later in the course, it is true that we will use uh, fractions only in the mole interpretation of reactions, which we do use more in the end. Okay, so in order to get everything to be small whole numbers, we are going to multiply all the coefficients times two, and then rewrite everything. Seven is the coefficient for oxygen. four for carbon dioxide, and six for H2O. And so that's how you handle fractions. You can run into them, you can balance them. There are other techniques that just simply start by putting a two here, that's fine too, and then balancing. I like smaller numbers personally and then multiplying, but everybody's got their own way. Combustion of propanol is gonna be similar to combustion of ethane. Um, except that combustion of propanol, we're going to have CH3, CH2, CH2, OH as the formula that you will condense and then use in the companion problem. Let's do an example now with nitrogen. Nitrogen um, is, so four elements here. We have uh, nitrobenzene, I'm gonna leave the phase off this. But burning always adds oxygen. It always has carbon dioxide plus H2O. And in this case, whenever there's a different element, you'll always have information about what the product that contains that element is. Here it's nitrogen dioxide. But it's the same process. And that's a lot about what this course is about, is learning general processes that we can apply to similar and new problems. Certainly, four elements and the most atoms. The one coefficient for most complex formula goes here. Then I will balance my carbons with a six coefficient for carbon dioxide. Balance my hydrogens. I have five hydrogens on the reactant side. I need five hydrogens here. That becomes five halves. Uh, and then nitrogen, one, one. All right, and now for this one, I'm gonna have to add up my oxygens. I have uh, 12 oxygens plus five half oxygens plus two oxygens. Well, I'm always happy to get out my calculator. Plus five halves is gonna be five, no, five divided by two. Uh, plus two, I get 16. 0.5 oxygens. That means I need 16.5 oxygens on the, oh, I have two of them already. So I have two here. I need 14.5 oxygens here. Oxygens come two at a time. So just like in the previous example, I'm gonna take whatever number of oxygens I need, divide it by two and have it be the coefficient. Like so not complete. In fact, um, this time, if I multiply everything by two, I'm still gonna have 14.5, which has a fraction. So to clear the fractions this time, this is about the most complicated example we can get. Uh, oh, I'm gonna multiply everything times four. That means I'm gonna have four nitrobenzenes plus and again, I'm not above calculating this out here. We have 14.5 uh, uh, divided by two, that's the coefficient, 7.25. And then I'm multiplying everything times four, 29. Multiply times four, multiply times four, 20 divided by ten, two is 10. And there is my balanced reaction for this process.